What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Moto 411. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the 250 East Championship and what we're looking at after Daytona. So let's get into it. First, I'd absolutely like to congratulate Tom Vial on getting his first AMA Supercross victory. It was well-deserved, and on a track like Daytona, it's nothing to scoff at. With Daytona being somewhat of a hybrid between Supercross and Motocross, it's no surprise that Tom Vial did well here, considering he's a two-time MX2 world champion over in the MXGP scene in Europe. I'm sure this will be a huge boost to Tom's confidence, and I'm interested to see if he can continue this pace going forward. He's clearly done a lot of work in the offseason, and it surely looks like all that work he did in the offseason is paying off because he's already gotten better results this season in Supercross than he had all last season. Despite that Detroit first turn incident that took out half the field, Tom managed to get his first podium in Supercross last weekend in Arlington and then proceeds to get a first place here in Daytona tonight. So whatever he did in the offseason to get his Supercross legs under him definitely paid off. And I think I can say with confidence that Tom Vial is looking like a title threat this year. He's doing much better than he did last year in Supercross. And he gets a pass for his mediocre performances last year in Supercross as that was his first year racing here in America in Supercross and uh, he had minimal to no Supercross experience prior to racing last year so he's doing exceptional this year so congratulations again Tom keep up that pace my man before we move on to the next rider, let's talk about this 250 East point standings. It has turned into quite an exciting series already, with everyone being neck and neck all the way down to 7th place. You've got Max Anstey up front with 52 points, McAdoo behind him with 1, Pierce Brown tied with McAdoo, minus 1, then you have Vial, minus 3, Deegan, minus 3, Cody Shock, minus 4, Dax, minus 8, and we'll, if we're going to go to 8th, Seth, minus 13. After so many title contenders being down in that first turn in Detroit and being so far back in points, I initially didn't think that this East series was going to be very entertaining, but I was definitely wrong about that. It's going to be an exciting next few weeks for the 250 East Coast, and I can't wait to see how things are going to unfold. There's a lot of title threats in that field, and I'm excited to see who's going to rise to the top. The next rider I want to talk about is Hayden Deegan. I was expecting a lot more from him this weekend, considering he got his first win last weekend, albeit because Forkner crashed. A fourth is not what I was expecting from Deegan, but if you saw his crash that he had in qualifying, he was only mere inches away from ending his season entirely. If his body wouldn't have cleared that triple when he ejected from the bike and he ended up colliding with the back end of that landing, it would have been done. He would have been seriously injured, and his 2024 SX season would have been chalked after that. I'm going to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he didn't want to send it too hard after that crash and was going to be more cautious and focused more on the long term with eyes looking ahead to the championship at the end of the season. So if we're putting ourselves in his shoes or anyone else's shoes for that matter who's a title threat, there's no need to go balls deep and ride on that limit every single race if it's going to cause you to potentially crash out of the season. Sometimes you're not going to be the fastest guy on the track and that's okay. That's when you have to do damage control, understand when and where you need to push and when it's time to back off a little bit. And I think that's exactly what Deegan did. It was a very smart move by him to just kind of be reserved, not push it too hard, and just make it through the night so we can get on to the next week. Definitely wasn't a bad night for Hayden, especially when you look at the point standings, him only being three points back. That was the smart move, and he did what he had to do. Next up, I want to talk about Cameron McAdoo for a little bit. He had the lead for a good portion of that race, but he ended up making a few mistakes here and there, which caused Vial to get by, and ultimately Vial got the win. But besides that, Cameron looked pretty solid at Daytona, and if you take away that first turn crash in Detroit, Cameron would actually be the red plate holder right now. So Cameron is doing quite well for himself this season, and I'm stoked for him because considering the injuries that he's faced the last couple of years, it's great to see him rebound and doing quite well so far this season. Hopefully he can keep it on two wheels for the rest of the season and continue to do well. So that's going to about do it for my recap on Daytona and where I think some of these riders are. I'm stoked for next week's race in Birmingham, and you guys know we'll be right back at it with more videos. So thank you all for tuning in, and thank you very much to those of you who've watched this far into the video. You're the real ones. I appreciate you. Hello, everyone. This is your editor, Mrs. Moto411. I'd like to say that I appreciate you all for watching, and let's hope it's not going to be a mutter in Birmingham this Saturday. Be safe. Take care. Thank you.